We are talking about the four criti critical conversations and decisions that you need to make when buying and selling in the same market. So, Rebecca, welcome to the studio. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we've been doing this real estate for 16 years together. We're married, and so we and we've run a real estate team and now brokerage, and we have had lots of conversations over the last 16 years about moving. We've done many four moves ourselves personally. Yeah, some with little children. Yeah, and each move has, you know, sometimes has been for a different reason. First was my first condo, then was our first house together. And so I always start, like I talk to people uh, daily who are obviously thinking of moving. And, you know, one of the big questions that people often don't consider is, why they're moving and um, where they'll be in the next five years if they'll have, you know, if their dream is to have four golden labradoodles or, you know, six kids or no kids or being close to a school, they often just don't start to, you know, don't yeah. kind of unpack those things. They kind of get wrapped up in the beautiful kitchen or the shiny bathroom, but sometimes forget to say, will this house work for me in, in the, the future? future? When I think the what you're leaning into is the first of the four is knowing who you're going to be in five years and, and understanding and, and kind of like no one really knows who they're going to be five years. Like, I mean, think of five years ago and how much of a different person you are. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, and so, man, we got a lot of people watching. Hey, if you're if you're watching, give a thumbs up, give a comment. We're here. We can see them. We're live. So. Uh, so, so let's, let's, let's interact, <laughs> let's talk, let's have a conversation around this. So knowing who you'll be in five years. And one of the, I think a good, good question to ask is, um, who are you going to be or what's going to make you happy, um, during the next time period, five years, three years, two years, that's going to make you happy about your progress. And, and I think having really good questions that you can ask yourself is really, really important. Sometimes it's thinking through, okay, we just got married and who are we going to be in five years? Are we going to plan on having kids? Where do we want those kids to go to school? Uh, it could be a uh, relationship change, totally. uh, chapter change. And now, you know, you're, you're right sizing for the family that you are now. So, and I think that sometimes um, moves are, you know, there's different, there's different seasons. And so I love chatting with clients and just having that conversation to, go through those seasons because um, asking good questions gives a pause. And so it's always good just to have a pause. I appreciate good questions. So any good questions, you could throw them up. Yeah. So, uh, so again, if you have questions about buying and selling in this market or just the market in general, we'll see them, we'll throw them up, we'll have conversations around them. So number two, understanding value based on location. So one of the things that we've seen in clients and one of the things that we've had to understand ourselves when we're making changes, when we're moving around, is it's kind of hard to understand completely like the value of location. And the way that I like to kind of describe this is even for ourselves, we together, together we have a 10 and an eight year old little ladies and trying to explain to them um, why we live in our city and why we live in a bungalow. <laughs> and all they can think about is, well, my friends, they have stairs and an upstairs. Why don't we have that? Where uh, our house is worth more than a two-story house out way out in the suburbs. And it's just hilarious trying to have this conversation with them uh, and understanding value. But it's a, it, it brings a really good point uh, because even from one community to another, values can be drastically different. Uh, different, sorry. And so you really want to be able to truly understand what it is that the values are. And this is where you got to lean on your agent or realtor to, to help you understand that, whether it's with us, a part of our team or one of us, or, um, or it's your own agent that you have. Helping to understand the true cost of value and land uh, is going to help you in that decision of buying and selling. And yeah, and then it goes into the third point. Sometimes, you know, you're selling often, you know, when we chat with people, they're selling a house and then moving into a different community. And sometimes when there's, you know, you could be selling a house and the absorption rate, which Jared spoke about earlier in a couple of videos ago, um, is super low. And so your house will sell fast and who wants to be homeless or um, you're in a situation where the neighborhood you want to be in those 
properties are selling fast before you can even see them and your house is sold. Yeah. And so there's a coordination process and there's this this dance that I walk through uh, buyers and sellers continually um, how to how to buy and sell because most people have two properties. Do you rent that property out? Do you you know sell it at the same time? Can you hold both mortgages? Everybody's story is very unique and has a different story. And so it's just important to kind of get those parameters so you can make a plan because I find it, it's, you know, to move forward to something, it's having a plan and then um, a kind of a, a map of a direction you're going to go in. Totally. Well, and I think in, in, in what the absorption rate is or months of inventory, it's basically how quickly things move. And, it, and you don't want to be, um, you, you don't want to be buying when nobody's selling and you don't want to be selling when nobody's buying if that makes sense and and by having these differences um and and having the um the the understanding of the market uh where you're living right now and where you're moving to it completely changes your strategy of buying or selling and so uh, understanding those very simple numbers, uh, but it, it gives a lot of input on, on what it is that you're looking for. So if you're under trying to figure out, you know, what is my market like where I'm selling, look up months of inventory. That's the number that you really want to understand. And, uh, and we have other videos about understanding absorption rate or months of inventory that you can watch. Um, but uh, but that's, that's kind of what you really want to be careful of. And the fourth one is, you know what? A big conversation that you have to have when you're buying and selling in the same market is, I feel like I'm going to be approved easily because I already have a mortgage. Is that true? I think that, yeah, the government has made so many changes, even made a change in July, that it's just good to get the pulse on that because I find the bank wants more paperwork every year. And that's probably the most unfun part about buying a house because yep. it you know, doesn't symbolize a new kitchen or a new bathroom or, you know, the yard that you're going to sit outside in on around your fire pit. So I think just having those conversations to uh, see if you can carry two mortgages is it's important. really, really important. Yeah, because if you sometimes you don't have enough equity, uh, you need bridge financing. Uh, there's lots of different things that you need and you're not just going to get automatically qualified for your next place just because you already have a mortgage and you've been paying it. Uh, you have to go like you are a different person than when you bought this place than you are now. And things have changed. Investments have changed. Uh, you might have a rental property or you might have different stocks or you might have kids now or different incomes or jobs or so many different variables that change everything. So you got to make sure that, that you look at that and figure it out. Now, we said we do four, but there's one bonus one that we do want to talk about. So those of you that are stuck around this long, this is a, it's a big conversation and we're going to go through it really quickly. And I feel like we're going to do another whole conversation around it. Um, but it's all tied to the sale of your home condition. So as agents, we call this a special clause sale and you probably think of it as, well, can't I just make my purchase conditional upon me, uh, selling my home. So that way you can tie up a house and, Make sure you get the house, um, but then on the other side of it, you still are trying to sell your house. Um, there's, I think, a couple things that can cause a lot of problems when you get into that situation. It's not ideal. We don't necessarily, I don't know, encourage clients to do this. Um, and why is that? I think partly is like you're securing a house. You have to, when you're doing a special clause sale, your offer could be bumped at any time. And we've actually had a couple uh, team members over the last week that their their buyer has bumped another um, buyer's special clause sale. And so you get really emotionally invested into the house. Plus you're spending uh, money on either a, haunt, a home inspection or a condo doc condition. And so just understanding the process and sometimes it, depending on where the market's at, you can sometimes pay a little bit more for the special for to do a special clause sale. Now that may be worth it because it could be your dream home. And so it's not that something that we don't you know, suggest from time to time. But I think just understanding most times when I talk to clients, they don't understand how quickly they or a time period they would have to um, remove that special clause sale. They think it ties it up for way longer. So it's just having all those pieces. Plus your house has to be ready 
to list um, usually within five days, um, not or, always or less. Or less. Or and less, so yeah. that also is a is you know we need some planning there uh, just to yeah. because you know we live and sell houses super differently. So that's just some things to consider. There's lots to consider, and it's you know we love having those conversations either through. Um, we get lots of Facebook messages or Instagram messages or some phone calls. I think it's just like having someone to kind of ask those questions and, you know, go down that road. That's, I mean, I, I love talking about that. <laughs> well, and I think the other, um, there's, I mean, to tie into what you're saying there, um, the, the, the thing is, is if you put an offer in on a property and you end up, um, you end up basically going conditional you have a conditional sale with your house if another offer comes in let's say within 24 48 hours before you even done a home inspection that offer can actually bump you out 100 percent. you have to remove all conditions so if you are doing this make sure you read through the contract and that document because it does state in there that you have to remove all conditions and so you can change that. You can cross it off and just say you have to remove the sale of buyer's home condition. That way you can finish your home inspection, let's say. Uh, but be aware that of what you're putting out there because most agents don't even realize that because it's like a one-liner inside uh, that, that actual document that, that we use for that. And so the other downfall of using a special home or a special clause sale or the sale of your home condition is, um, is having... Um, expectations of what you're going to buy this home for as well as what you're going to sell your home for so that the time of you putting in that offer and actually saying yay we tied up our new house now let's sell ours uh, you are kind of locking into a price for both and but what happens is you're also locking into an expectation and whenever you lock into an expectation you not a good thing uh, because what's going to happen is you are going to end up potentially if the market is dropping let's say use that for an example and you can't sell your house quickly as you as quick as you thought uh, all of all of the sudden you're going to start having um, you're going to have to reduce your price and if you start reducing your price on your sale and you've locked in a higher price on your purchase well now all of a sudden there's a gap that get, gets created and now you're trying to renegotiate with that, that, uh, that place that you love. Uh, and then let's say it all falls apart and you and the other, and the buyer, the sellers on the other side are like, no, 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 we're out. And now what's going to happen is you're going to compare every other house that you see because now that one's gone. And the seller said, no, he said, we can't wait for you anymore. You're going to compare every other house that you see later on to that house. And that's going to suck. That's going to be really, really hard. That's going to be um, emotionally tough because it, nothing will be the same. Because there never is really two of the exactly the same homes, right? And so, because uh, you emotionally bought into that house. And so, um, so those are our four plus one things that you need to have conversations about uh, when it comes to buying and selling in the same market. So I don't know, is there anything else you want to add? No, that was good to just, I mean, it's eight o'clock. It's not before nine. We did a video. <laughs> we have Starbucks. Um, would love to connect in, you know, any way that you want to. Um, we would just, you know, have lots of, would love to kind of, no one's situation is the same. So it's yep. good to unpack these. So thank you for watching and uh, enjoy your day and yes. we'll chat soon. Thank you. Enjoy your day, everybody. See you later.